egotist. If he thinks I'm going to sit home and cry my eyes out, he's got a door to slam. Well, so have I. I can make my own living just as well as he can make his. He ought to be glad I'm working. Just because he can't stand competition, he wants me to quit. My work isn't important enough. I'm only a woman. But he, the man, is boss. He'd like me to be a slave to the house while some cutie on the paper whispers into his porteries. Look at this mess. The way he throws his clothes around. It wouldn't hurt his highness a little interest in the house. I'm the one who's married, but he can act as if he were single. He wouldn't dream of wearing a wedding ring, no matter how much I tell him I like it. But I'm as good as he is. I've got a brain of my own, and I intend to make the most of my life, too. Yes, I want a home and kids, but I'm not going to be a fool like Mother, bending over a wash tub all her life while Dad went around as free as air. A woman's place is in the home. Why, His Highness ought to wear side whiskers and carry a gold-headed cane. If he thinks I'm going to obey his every command, he can get right out of my life. And I mean it, right out of my life. That's a woman for you. Never tell what she'll do next. And all the time I thought she was so sweet and tender. What a temper. Lucky I ducked out when I did. How could I win? I'm only a man. Oh, well, a copy won't wait. Where do women get the idea that they wear the pants? Must be her diploma. To a man, it's a piece of paper, but Virginia, she's got the world at her feet. The way she hangs on to her name, you'd think it was a shame to be a Jackson. I write the copy, but it comes out as a picture story by Virginia Chase. She'd break her neck for a good shot, but our home is like a bachelor rooming house. It's about time she learned what comes first, marriage or her job. Everybody else leads a normal life, why can't we? I'm fed up with warmed up leftovers and dishes in the sink. She can't even find time to sew on a button for me. How Mom used to take care of Dad, and how happy both of them were. Virginia's got no such respect for a man. What was she thinking of when she said, I do? A roommate to help with the dishes? What does a man work for, beating his brains out to make something out of himself if his wife doesn't look up to him? Instead, she competes with me and makes a half-man out of me and a half-woman out of herself. And I, like a fool, thought I was getting a wife. I'll show her who's boss, even if we wind up in the courts. This wasn't the first time that Jackson's marriage had shown signs of cracking. And the next morning, as had happened many morning afters, they were assigned to the same story. Here they were. Who was to blame? Neither and both. Each one felt he was being asked to give up more than he could afford. Yet almost without knowing why, they moved toward each other and fumbled for some way of coming closer together. Let's go someplace and talk, Mike said. Thank you. This was my last assignment, Mike. Why? What happened? Nothing. I've made up my mind. I'm quitting the job. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. But what would you do? Nothing. Stay in all under your slippers when you come home at night. Oh, Jenny, I wasn't trying to defeat you. And what was all that yelling about last night? I was a fool. You know, after I cooled off last night, 
I found I'd been hanging on to a lot of ideas I don't really believe in anymore. I realized I'd miss your puttering in the dark room. Oh, Mike, you don't have to prop me up. No, really. I like a woman who's doing things, Jenny. I didn't marry you so you'd admire me and laugh at my jokes. You've got a mind of your own, and you've got to use it. It's about time I accepted you as you really are. Darling, you don't know how much you're saying. It's like getting a wonderful present. I feel like, I don't know. Well, here's my padded shoulder. You know, when we disagree, it's a good idea to disagree about things we really don't agree about. That was a mouthful. I'd like to get some shots of the kids in the park. Let's straighten up and go outside. It's too nice a day to stay in the house. Why don't we forget about cleaning up and go then? Oh, no. I hate to come home to a messy house. The least you could do is pick up your clothes. And the least you could do is to forget about your job on Sunday. I hate weekends like this. So you didn't mean a word of what you said yesterday, did you? No, that's not what I meant. But can't we have a little bit of a family life, at least on Sunday? Well, we may as well have this out again. Sure, I want family life. But if I'm to keep up my job, I can't do all the housework myself. You've got to do the few things I ask you to, Mike. Are you trying to boss me again? Oh, Mike. Okay, Jenny. This is the last time you'll have to tell me. What do you want me to do? Okay, okay, we're up. Jenny, you're doing things to me. A year ago, I'd have heard that alarm in my dreams and slept on. I feel good, too. I feel like splurging tonight. It's payday. But we were out only day before yesterday. Every day seems payday to you. One day we go out, the next day you buy a chiffon nightgown. But we never save a penny that way. It's my money. Her toast's gonna burn. Don't run away. I want this straightened out. I thought you weren't gonna mold me anymore. You got a cigarette? No, you haven't brushed your teeth yet. And don't change the subject. Do I look good in a chiffon nightgown or don't I? Or don't you notice anymore? I do, dear. I didn't mean to pick on that. I'm just trying to make a dollar worth of buck. That's my point. Well, how do we do that? That's something we'll have to find out. Well, I think it's just one of the things we'll have to work out. Breakfast will be ready in a minute. You waste as much money as I do, Mike, and you know it. Who, me? Yes, how about all your taxi cabs and fancy lunches and cocktails and things? Oh, that's a business investment. You mean an alibi, don't you? <coughs> All right, so I've got no head for money. Oh, now, don't get cross. I'm not trying to start an argument. From now on, why don't we both write down every cent we spend? That won't help. We'll just spend it anyway. Well, what will help? A budget. Oh, that would depress me, Mike. I feel like it depended on an allowance. That's the only thing that'll make a marriage like ours work. What about love? Doesn't that come first? Of course. Got to rest on a balanced budget. There you are. We've still got $40 of our week's pay left. Mind you, that's after all bills are paid. Doctor, your allowance and mine, everything taken care of. Now what are we going to do with all this money? Tell you what. You just write down everything you've ever wanted. All right. I like this part of it. Go ahead. Just splurge. I'll write mine down, too. Let's see. Rolleiflex, fur jacket, some new china. Hey, this is fun. Wait a minute. We wanted a vacation. We must save something for a vacation. Yes, I need a vacation, too. Oh, I see. You mean we have to cut out something. And, Jenny, another thing, remember? A house, and a kid, or kids, and a car. We've got to start saving. And all that out of 40 bucks? A week. Well, forget, that's a lot of money in a year. 
We can cut down on our allowance, too. Look, if I cut down on cigarettes, on cabs, I bring in another $10. Well, that's $500 a year. Let me see the food budget. If we eat home two more days a week, and look, that fur jacket can wait, too. Baby, you catch on quick. It's fun to make money like this. Jenny, we just made a chunk of dough. It's 60 instead of 40 a week now. Well, that's wonderful. Mike, you're wonderful. Where would I be without you? desk friend of yours, the one that was making passes at Marge. I thought he was disgusting. If you must know, that genius photographer friend of yours bores me stiff. Why do we have to have two sets of friends anyway? That's right. Why? Incidentally, you could have mentioned that I made the cake myself. Sorry. But you could have let me get halfway through one story without breaking in on it. I guess we haven't learned yet not to compete with each other. Tired. You know the Robinsons that live up the street in that new house you like? I keep meeting her at the grocery all the time. She's asked us in lots of times. What's her husband like? I think you'd like him. Yes, I think it'd be a good idea if we made friends with some neighbors. The next time you see her, tell her we'd be delighted to come. What's today? 20th. And last month when we did that hospital story, when was that? No, 10th. Why? I think you better take me to the doctor tomorrow. It's seven years now since the Jacksons decided to work at their marriage. It's no coincidence, perhaps, that for the last seven years, the marriage has worked for them. Not perfectly, of course, but well enough. They were tough years, too, full of crises and the normal run of trouble but the Jacksons took them in stride. Mike has won his promotion by hard work, the same way he has made himself a happy home. A little luck, but mostly sweat and tears. There have been two additions to the family. Tom is seven and a budding Tarzan. Mike gets a kick out of seeing young muscles and skills develop. He can nearly remember when he was seven himself. So long, fella, be seeing you. They get along pretty well, these male Jacksons. With themselves, and with their women folk. Hello, Mike. Thanks for bringing those things. The couple still need kid gloves from time to time, but they figured out ways to handle ticklish situations. Virginia's apron, when it's worn astern, means, take it easy, I need tender love and care tonight. And Mike's got his own danger signals. His spinning hat says it's one of those days when a fella needs a friend. I see you had a hard day. Not so hard that a warm greeting can't help a little. Let me finish this. I'll be with you in a minute. And even now. Can't you teach Tom to keep his junk out of the way? Why don't you watch where you're going? Tom's part of this family, too, you know. But he has to learn to keep order someday. Well, he will. But losing your temper won't do it. But nowadays, such scenes don't end with one of them sulking. Their relationship isn't brittle, always at the cracking point like it used to be. Mike isn't troubled by the fact that Virginia still has her own work to do once in a while. They've long since stopped worrying about who's breadwinner and who's housemaker. Mike's dignity is much more flexible since he discovered that a wet baby loves whoever changes her, male or female. It is almost ready. Come any time. It'll be awfully simple. He learned his techniques when Tom was an infant, and he's mighty proud of his tender touch. Why not? Some guys boast of their sensitivity to the feel of a fishing line. Mike thinks handling a prima donna is even trickier. Home life at the Jacksons, like most American home life, is a curious jumble of interests and needs. To make it everybody's family table takes a lot of doing. Mike and Virginia have learned they can make it theirs by being aware of everybody else's wants. By taking time out for the others, they make time for themselves. These days, Virginia is proud of Mike's success. They're not competing anymore. Why should they? Budgets and careers and differences of personalities don't have to mean trouble. 
It's a good deal for both, this partnership without a boss. The fruits of adjustment are a little noisy, but mighty sweet.